Welcome to Pitchapalooza! Welcome to New York, New York. So nice they named it twice. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm going to go through this quickly because we want to get as many of you pitchers up here as we possibly can. Oh, okay, here's how it works. We're going to pick a name first. That'll be our first pitcher. The pitcher comes up here and pitches in front of everybody. When you're done pitching, stay up there because we are going to critique your pitch in a kind and gentle way. No one's going to ask you if you got your hair cut in a Cuisinart, I promise you. Kind and gentle. Our objective here is to make everybody's pitch better and ultimately, as the book doctors, to help everyone here get successfully published. Okay, you get one minute to pitch. Let me repeat that. One minute. You will be cut off mid-syllable. Many people ask us, they say, why do I only get a minute to pitch my beautiful opus? Well, in this attention deficit span culture we created, you better be able to tell a story in a minute. We've been all over this country, from coast to coast. We've heard amazing stories told in a minute. A minute. In fact, someone recently made my wife cry in 11 seconds. That's true. I've been married to her for 20 years. I've never been able to do that. <laughs> when we're done, we will announce a winner. That winner gets introduced to an agent or publisher who's right for their work. Already dozens and dozens and dozens of people who participated, not just one, but participated in Pitchapalooza, have gone from talented amateurs to professionally published authors. And it's our mission to help you guys succeed in that today. Okay, I would like to introduce uh, our lovely and talented panelist. Cheryl Willis Hudson, who is the co-founder and editorial director, is that right. correct, of Just Us Books, an amazing independent publisher. Cheryl, you want to say a couple words about yourself? Um, I am one half of Just Us, the other half is Wade Hudson. Uh, we've been around for 30 years publishing uh, amazing African-American interest children's books. And I've been involved in publishing as an art director and editorial director for 40 plus years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just a shout out in general to independent publishers. Uh, many people in this room uh, probably have the idea that the best publisher for you is a big five publisher and an agent. And if you go onto YouTube, you'll see many videos that David and I have done about why that probably isn't the case. So please uh, check out all the great independent publishers, many of whom are exhibiting here. Uh, let me introduce my partner in crime. She's been a literary agent for over 25 years. She's also the author of 10 books, almost 11. She has a book that literally just got turned in this week, so that's very exciting. She's also an author. She's also an entrepreneur. She started a company called Little Mismatched that began by selling socks that don't match in packs of threes. That company grew up to the point where they have stores all the way from Disneyland to Fifth Avenue in New York City. But perhaps most importantly, she is the mother of my child, Ariel Eckstein. Thank you, thank you. And my partner in crime is the author of 16 books and counting. Uh, his first book was a national bestseller, and one of his last books was on the cover of the Sunday New York Times Book Review. He writes in a very wide variety of topics, from memoir to middle grade fiction, and from sports to reference. Many of his books have been optioned by Hollywood, but perhaps most importantly, he is the father of my child. Nice how that worked out, right? <laughs> David yes. Henry Sterry. And we are very quickly going to do the pitch for our oh, book, so because see. lots of people come in, they're not quite sure what a pitch is. is. Right. So, are you ready? I am. All right. The, the essential, essential guide to getting, getting your book published is a step-by-step, blow-by-blow explanation of how, how to take an idea you're passionate about, make a book out of it, get it published, and deliver it into the hands, heads, and hearts of readers all over the world. Thank you, New York! Yeah. 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 19 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. But it did take us six, six months <laughs> to, to develop. To write, memor memorize, and choreograph. We did bring a choreographer in. 
<laughs> and I think we are ready. I are think we ready? We're ready. Okay. We're ready. Right. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, in publishing, we're looking for things that are unique and yet different. I want a couple of actual incidents, pieces of action that show us instead of tell us that the father's an alcoholic. Like, I would open the pitch with a, a scene from the book condensed down to one sentence or two where we see his behavior and see her, how it affects her, and then go into the explanation of it. And then when she gets to college, maybe we see one or two scenes of how she's tempted and how, you know, how hard it is for her and it's some sort of behavior that leads us to believe she can't possibly make it. Like, leave us with a, a, a cliffhanger that seems like, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? I, everything that David said, um, I also felt there was repetition in the pitch as to the situation, and that instead of repeating how difficult a situation is, we could have gotten a little bit more of the arc of the story. So I was really interested what happened when she gets to college, I wanna see her in the scene where there's alcohol there's all around her. And whatever, I yeah. think the pitch yeah. should end with the choice of whether or not she's going to engage in That's in good. in drinking. I think the uh, pitch was good. Um, I would have loved you to slow it down just yeah, a little we'll bit in terms okay. of articulating. I know you have one minute, but you can start <laughs> uh, uh, and and be very intentional about the title, about the main character's name, so that you don't have to say what. What is the story about? Who is it? Is it luck or is it lux? Um, so just articulate that a little bit stronger. Um, the story and framing it as why a speculative fiction is excellent. Yeah. So we know exactly what genre uh, this is. And um, I would move forward with that. We're great. Comparable titles are so important for us in, in the publishing business. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of great ones. Mm -hmm. Because these complexes, they shouldn't be, oh, this is the next Harry Potter Hunger Games. They should be books that people in the business know that are really great, that, that you admire also. For everybody, just a couple of words that describe the character so we see them helps us to emotionally bond with that character. Um, and I also wanted to see a, a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end where we see a piece of action that is where, like, she can, there's no, no way she's getting out of this thing. You know, the love's gone, she's not gonna be the, the, the champion. Leave us there, you know, dangling again from the cliff. I need more detail and specificity because right now it's kind of like a soft cloud of interesting words, but like I, I need some like, a, something to actually grab onto. I was curious as to whether this is an adult book or whether it could have been for middle readers. I didn't know what the age group was. Again, for the, the pitch to know the target uh, audience and the character's name. It seems like you have a great story here, but, but for me the problem was there was a lot of words that were sort of general, uh, in tragic, strength, love, loss, pain, heartache. Those are all ideas. Yeah. I want to see in this pitch more action more um, uh, uh, like maybe when she meets this person who is, and how, uh, how that relationship unfolds, more like of the arc of the story, uh, and what the stakes are for our hero. What's gonna happen if everything goes wrong for her? Um, that will take the pitch from being, I think, uh, a little bit too general, yet vague, yes, to being more specific. Yeah. You know, like David said, the, all those very general words, we, we, did, we actually did a pitch palooza yesterday at Rutgers, and one of our panelists said, it takes the same amount of words to be general as to be specific. Um, and I, I don't understand like exactly how the, there, there's magic in this book. But yeah, I don't understand how your magic is different than the magic that we've seen in all the other magic books. Uh, and the tone of your voice in giving the presentation was mesmerizing. It was it great. Was. I loved it. Yes. 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 Uh, unfortunately, you can't hear that on the sheet of paper. Right. right. But if you put that same yes. deliberateness yes. and the feeling that your voice is projecting, yes, I agree. that will, the story will come through. And I think that yeah. that's a very strong point. It could make an excellent audio book. I was just thinking that. Yes, well done. Thank yes. you. In terms of the, what, the next step of where it can go, both of these characters right now 
are kind of slightly cardboardy to me because I don't I don't know what's wrong with him and I don't quite have a sense of what drives her. I know she wants to find love, but who is she? What, where, who is she in the world? I don't even know how old she is. Or, what she looks like. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what is, she, not that you have to say what she does for a living, but to place her in the world um, or her background or something, I think is important. So the, this is like weaving in the, the color into the pitch now so that these characters really come alive. I think the first statement was good. It's an awesome time to be yeah. a woman. So that draws you in it and does. we know immediately that uh, yeah. this is going to be about maybe a woman and self-discovery and you mentioned the key words there. It's a, a journey for longing, for love. So um, there are many interesting details in, in this pitch and interesting characters coming together. The the thing for me, uh, the next step to the pitch is right now, and this is very, very common, the pitch reads more like a book report. Oh, okay. so, story. So here are the characters, here's what happens. And we need to hear the voice of your book enter the voice of your pitch. Oh. So that we have some feeling of what the story is going to be like to read. So. All, you know, the characters are cool and interesting and I'd like to see them bump up against each other, but if you imagine starting this pitch with a sentence or two about that actually happening so we get a scene in our head, that would be really helpful. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I, I want, I agree with Ariel, but I would like a little more world building. I don't see what the world looks like. Uh, you would have seen, <laughs> we both agreed on that. Because you're taking us to a cool world that's from your mind and so we, we don't know what it looks like. What is the world like after humans have been gone for, for 4,000 years or whatever? Yeah. I needed some more of that in there. Okay. And then, you know, uh, more of the, of the plot, the series of, of things that happens uh, that leads us to some sort of climax. Yeah. What day is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. I think you've got to be uh, careful sometimes when you do mention uh, comp novels or comp books, Little Ma Mermaid meets Pride and Prejudice, can be a little bit off-putting if that's stuck in your head the first thing that you said. I think that the uh, Caribbean inspiration can give us a lot more in terms of the flavor of the language, yeah, of the world, of the background. Where is Puerto Rico? Where is the Caribbean? What part of the Caribbean? What words are you using? And again, the world building, it's a, a fantasy. Are we underwater? Uh, are we above water? Um, you've got a lot of time to present that in very specific ways. I got a little bit confused with all the different characters. Like I didn't know who they were. And the councils, and um, there's a list about three quarters of the way through. Um, they're not going to stop her. They're not going to stop her. But I don't know who any of those things, what those are. So it got a little confusing to me. Um, I would focus more on, there's an evil character in this. Uh, I, Focus on that evil character and the sisters, um, uh, and, and show us these people more. I don't know what they look like, I don't know what their magic is exactly. Like, um, you mentioned there's some dark ritual in there, like, I, I want to know more about these things, and they just go by so fast, so I would take out some of the stuff that you, you can't go into and focus, again, on like, how is your evil character different than all the, all the Voldemorts and the Hannibal the Cannibal Lecters? And what's cool and interesting about that? Where I, when I, when I, I liked uh, the way you positioned the first uh, couple of sentences. Yes, yeah, me too. Little sister, I love that. Which, it's great. who says the wrong words yeah, yeah. Uh, and wished her sister away. I mean, if you could get that all in one sentence rather than the three or four that you used, I think that. Uh, encapsulates what the story is. So the challenge in terms of the arc of the story is what happens when Amy goes missing. So I got Amy, I didn't get the older sister's name, and I know there's magic in here, but if you could build that and use just one sentence to tell what you said in about six sentences, that would give you a little bit more space for us to know what the world really looks like and what the, the cliffhanger is.
Um, I think when uh, you make a description for a children's book, everybody says it's whimsical, everybody says it's fantastic, everybody says it's delightful. Those are usually words that are used over and over again, but you have to have something more specific about the story itself. You feel like a writer to me, yeah, and yeah. the thing is, as a, as a speaker, and as a writer these days, you are called upon, once your book is out, to be a speaker is like, I just want to hear every single one of those words. Um, so this is your story? Yeah. Okay. So this is a actually a memoir, which is oh. different from an autobiography, just for everybody in the room who's writing memoir. Autobiography typically re refers to a famous person where you're going from uh, so that, that, that I was born in 1970 and you go through the entire life and this is, um, it, it, this is uh, very squarely memoir and one of the things about memoir that's so powerful is that you know the person experienced it. I, me. So I, when I was yes. uh, one years old, you were, yep. you, uh, my parents immigrated to the from United Russia. States from yeah. Russia. I was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. I was left alone with my sister while my parents blah blah blah. With these weird people I didn't know. <laughs> right, right. So what a dramatic story. It's a story. great story. Oh God, my gosh. Damn, yes. And knowing it happened to you, it's, it's, yes. it's moving, yeah. it's powerful. So you gotta take the so you gotta own the story, mm -hmm. yeah. and we need to hear. That was terrifying. It's terrifying. It's horrifying. The thing about it is that explains it. I, I love it when people take a minute to say the title as loudly and as strongly as possible. But I'd love to hear the subtitle of this yeah. book mm -hmm. because that explains it. A memoir of, of blah, yes, blah, yes. blah 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 True blah, story. Blah, blah. Yeah. Because that's a cra that's not a crazy story, but it's a, it's a powerful story. It's very dramatic in terms of coming to a new country, uh, a different place, and being almost abandoned. Uh, so that's a story of abandonment or whatever. So that's, a, the title is very important. Yeah, so I, I've written two memoirs myself and it was so hard to, to make say I, that these things happen to me, these horrible things. But when you do, it's an, for everybody here who's writing a story about themselves, it's an, once you get over that, it's enormously liberating and uh, it frees you. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know how you guys felt about that, but when you say everyone's the hero of their own story, uh, that felt a little generic to me. I, the, really, the pitch started when you said the title and then started into the story for me. Uh, when you got into the specifics of, um, of our two characters and, and their journey. Your pitch is your audition to show us what a great writer you are and how you can create a world for us economically and quickly. For all of us, we need a hero that we can fall in love with and that we can root for to succeed. And I thought that was going to be Andre. Um, but then he, he was sort of gone. So I need somebody at the center of this, whether it's Sonia and Andre, I don't know which one it is, that, or both of them, but I need to know more about them so I can, I can sort of, you know, glom onto them emotionally and feel like uh, I'm rooting for them. Uh, that's gonna be a huge uh, key to the success of this. What's missing for me is these kids. I don't really know them right now. I don't know what they look like. Did you say how old they are? Um, not yet. No. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. if I'm a bookseller, if I'm an agent, I'm an editor, I, I need to know how old these kids are um, mm -hmm. right from the get-go. That's, okay. That is going to be so um, important in where this book gets placed, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the world of kids' books. Yeah, they're 12. They're, they're 12, 12. so that's, that is perfect. Mm -hmm. That's great. But, of course, I need to know that. Right. This is a picture book. You've got 32 pages and 15 spreads to tell the whole story. If it's not a picture book and it's a middle grade reader, I think you need a little bit more in terms of the um, uh, climax, the beginning, the middle, and the end to, to be intriguing for a middle grader. I think it arts toward picture book, so you need to get to the story right away. And maybe the premise is okay, but if you spend too much time on that premise, you're gonna get lost. Yeah, I don't think you should tell us how it, the book ends because um, you want to leave us with some sort of, uh, you know, mystery. So, so uh, for everybody, the ideal response to a pitch is, oh my God, what happens next? Mm -hmm. But it would be as if you were doing a mystery and said, in the end, the butler did it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to know that, that the, the conclusion yet. Mm -hmm. We want to have 
uh, to discover it for, for ourselves. So I think you should take us up to that moment where she's in prison and she, what's going to happen? Is she going to die? Is the whole place going to gonna, um, dissolve into whatever? Um, leave us there instead of uh, resolving the whole story for us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a huge round of applause for everybody!